Good evening, everybody. We're going to talk about the basics of the fireworks interface tonight. And so what you see here, I have an image loaded onto my workspace. This workspace is here in the center of my window. To get the picture onto the workspace, what I did was I opened a file. Any image file will do this evening. Uh, a JPEG, a GIF, a ping, that'll all, they'll all work fine. So I went to the toolbar at the top of the fireworks window and I said file open and I just browsed for the image that I wanted to work with. So you should have some images on your flash drive this evening. Go ahead and open one of those. And once you have it open, it should appear on the workspace. You may not have as much gray area around your image if your image is larger than mine. That's absolutely fine. Don't worry about it. What I'd like to show you first is the properties panel. And the properties panel shows at the very bottom of the screen by default. And this properties panel is going to give you all the information you need about your canvas, about your image, and about objects on your canvas. So pretty much anything that you have selected, your properties panel is going to give you additional information about. So if you take a look right now, if I just click off of my canvas, the canvas is the area where my image is. That's what we're talking about right now. If I click in the gray space off of my canvas, you can see in the properties panel, it's giving me information about my canvas size. This is information about the space that I have to work with. These are the boundaries of my workspace. So I can select my canvas size and I can see my canvas size right now is 500 pixels by 284 pixels. That's width and height. And I can make it larger or smaller if I wanted to. You can also select my image by clicking on it. Make sure that you have your arrow tool, tool selected. It's the, the first tool in the upper left hand corner of your toolbar, which should show up on the left of your fireworks window. It may be on the right, so just look for a toolbar with a large number of tools. Your select tool is going to be the very first one in the top left. Click on your image, and then in your properties panel you're going to see that you have information about your image now. And so we see down here, whoops, keep clicking on my properties panel and it's disappearing. Don't do that. <laughs> so my properties panel, it says my image is 500 pixels by 284 pixels. That happens to be the same size as my canvas. Uh, and that's fine. If I wanted to learn more about this image, for instance, if I wanted to know the image dimensions and the resolution, if I wanted to change my image size. I could do that by going to modify on the menu across the top of the screen and selecting canvas. And then what I'm going to do is select image size. And here you see there's a lot of information about this image that we have here. I have the dimensions. This is the height and the width of the image that I'm ha that I have open here. I also have my print size available to me. Notice that the print size looks significantly different than the pixel dimensions. I also see my resolution, 72 pixels per inch. That's appropriate for the web. If I was going to resize this image for the web, I would change my pixel dimensions. To do that, what I want to make sure is that the constrained proportions option in the bottom left hand corner is checked. That makes sure that no matter which of the dimensions I modify, whether it be the width or the height of my image, that the other dimension is scaled proportionally to match that change so you don't have an image that gets stretched or smashed when you're trying to resize it. Let's say I wanted to resize my image to be 300 pixels wide. So I'm going to go up to my width measurement 
type in 300. Notice that my height was automatically calculated to be 170 pixels. I'm going to say OK. And then you can see Fireworks automatically then resizes the image as soon as I say OK. And I have a new image to work with. If I realize that I really didn't want to resize this image, I can undo this either by uh, clicking Control Z, Z is in Zebra, to undo that change, or I can go to the Edit drop down menu at the top of the window and select Undo, Undo Image Size, and now I'm back where I started. Things that you want to make sure you don't do when you're editing a raster image. Uh, you want to make sure that you don't try to make the image larger than the original. So let's say I have this image here that I'm working with and we know it's 500 pixels wide and I decide that I want this image really to be 700 pixels wide. I can't do that in Fireworks with this image that I've opened up. If I were to scale this image to 700 pixels in width, this image would look much worse than it does now. It would become pixelated. There would be a lot more artifacts apparent. Um, and this is because this is a JPEG. And when I try to scale up an image and change the size to something larger than the original, Fireworks doesn't have any additional data to work with. It can't fill in the gaps. It can't come up with that extra data to make the picture look larger because it only has a finite set of pixels to work with. And so it has to guess what the rest of the pixels need to look like to make the picture larger. And so whenever you try to upscale a raster image, whether it be a JPEG or a GIF or a ping, your image quality is going to look degraded. So we try not to do that. So when you're editing an image, it's always best to edit the original. And we'll talk about optimizing next week, but when we edit the original, we only need to optimize once. And I'll keep repeating that again, so you don't have to remember that part. But do remember, don't upscale raster images, because they just look terrible. And there are other tools that you can experiment with while we're here in Fireworks. Since we're working with a raster image, what we want to put, the tools we want to focus on are the tools under the select heading and the tools under the bitmap heading. So if we take a look at the tools under the select heading, you'll notice that there's a tool that uh, looks like uh, two opposing triangles, sort of. If you hold your cursor over it, it'll say crop tool. This tool allows you to eliminate information from your image. So I have an image of a boat here, and let's say I just want the picture of the boat, and I don't want that corner of the shore there. I'm going to take my crop tool, I'm going to click once, and hold down my mouse, and drag a selection across the area of the image that I want to keep. I'm going to release my mouse, and see I have a selection now around this area of the image that I want to preserve. I'm going to double click this and Fireworks will crop out the part of the image that it had not been selected. So that's a handy way to remove unwanted information from an image. So I can go and save this file as something else, so it's a good idea. Save your original when you make changes to an image, it's always good to save a copy. So let's go to File, Save As, and I'm going to save this as No Shore. And I do want it to be a JPEG. It was originally a JPEG, so that option is selected by default. I can hit Save, and Fireworks is saved to change.